Okay. This is how you fix a uh, closet organizer, like the kind you get from Souter or Closet Maids. Um, we uh, we have these uh, drawer rails that you can kind of put in wherever you want along the, the holes that are on the sides here. And um, over time, these drawer rails will start to sag and uh, the, the screw holes will strip out. At least they have on a few of them that we own. So um, what you're going to have to do to fix that screw hole, unfortunately, is um, because the screw will no longer hold the rail in place. Uh, there's probably other ways to do it, but the way I figured it out was um, I went over to Lowe's and uh, they have these little things called binding posts, which uh, <clears throat> basically, I don't know if you can kind of go in there, if you can see that, but it's basically a piece of metal, has a tube in it there, and then you, on the other end you're going to have a little screw that comes with it. And what we're going to do with these here is basically take the screw hole that was in the inside of the unit here where the drawer rail should be we're going to go ahead and take and drill that hole all the way out so that it goes through the actual organizer so I'm going to go ahead and place my drill bed into this drill here we'll take and go ahead and put the drill bit into the hole here and start drilling that through You want it to go all the way through the organizer because the way this works is the binding post has to come through the hole on the other side that you just drilled. So I'll show you that to you real quick here. Here's that binding post that I was talking about that we bought from Lowe's. You're going to take this and you're going to put it through that hole that you drilled on this end here. Should fit in there pretty snug as long as you matched up your drill size, your drill bit size. So now you've got your post is in here, you can see you don't want it to be coming through all the way because then it won't hold the rail on. So I'm just going to take my rail now that's sagging there and just take the other end of the binding post, the screw that came with the binding post, and we're just going to kind of match the hole up. Sometimes you might have like a little wood left in the hole that might cause the screw to kind of get bound up a little bit, so you might just have to kind of clear that out a little bit there. So then once you get once you get that together and you get your holes lined up and stuff, now you got your screw there. You just take your flathead screwdriver for this one, you the one you get might be Phillips said. But either way, you take your screwdriver and you go ahead and tighten that down. So, pretty good there. And that's not going anywhere now. And the great thing about these binding posts is that they're metal. They fit in the hole that you already had drilled there, and uh, it's not going to go anywhere. It's, you can't strip that back out again. So, this is going to be here for the rest of the life of this unit, more than likely. So, um, what's uh, the, the only downside of this, I mean, if you come on the other side, you can see that you're going to have this little button now that's right here. And... Uh, Unfortunately, I mean, that's, that's you know, aesthetically may not look great, but I mean, you, you know, you, you're already going to have some screws like this one up here that are, that come with the unit that keep the fixed shelves in place. So really to me, it's not a, um, it's not a huge deal. And honestly, when you have your clothes in there and stuff, it's going to kind of cover it up anyway. So I don't think it's a big deal, especially for the stability you gain from it. Um, I'm not going to go through and replace every single one of these. I kind of, I'll probably just replace them as they go, but, um, it's pretty good permanent fix for this though. Some things you want to keep in mind when you're doing this, however, is uh, when you buy your binding post, you want to make sure that it's not thicker than the wood that you're actually putting the binding post in. So this one right here, um, I believe it was three quarters of an inch, so we ended up getting a five eighths binding post. So it's just a little bit shorter than the uh, actual wood thickness. But like I said, you don't want your binding post coming through the wood because the screw has to get a little bit of bite when it's going in there to you know to hold down you don't many if it's if the binding post is pushing out it's gonna it's gonna cause it to um not clamp down to the wood so um yeah after that you know you just test out your drawer make sure it's still good to go I'll go ahead and move these out of the way here
looks like it's looks like it's in there pretty solid. It's not going to go anywhere. So, so that's pretty much it. I think that uh, the on the the only things you guys really need to know is that, um, like I said, well, I guess as far as you know, tools. I mean, I, I got a drill here. I have a drill. I have a you know, you got your your drill bit that you want to match up with your binding post. You know, you can take the screw that got stripped, stripped out the hole and uh, take it to Lowe's with you and you can kind of match it up with the binding post you buy. Um, you can buy a little cheap drill bit set for 10 bucks or something if you don't have any. And then of course you'll need a little screwdriver here too. So um, I wouldn't recommend uh, tightening these screws down with the drill just because you don't want to, you know, uh, potentially damage the, the hole any further or the, or the binding post. Okay, um, thank you very much. I appreciate it.